We're famous artists. It's famous artists. Paul Gauguin. Edward Hopper. And then go. Oh. Pablo Picasso. I thought so. I'm Goya. Hawaii. We're definitely people you should know. Sandra Botticelli, Michelangelo, Paul Clay. The names just keep on coming and we haven't got all day. We're famous artists. Renoir! We're famous artists. Au revoir! Monet, Da Vinci, Peter Bruegel. Don't pinch me! Some people think we're geniuses. Some people think we're weird. Weird? What do you mean? Weird is a relative term. To lose the track. Mary And please don't touch my beard. Andy Warhol, Jacob Lawrence, Jackson Pollock, too. I'm afraid we have to go now. So we'll just say doodaloo. And if you think we're slightly nuts, that may be slightly true. The bad, my fine young viewer, will leave up to you. Hello, I'm Claude Monet, one of the greatest artists ever. I helped invent an important style of painting, too, called Impressionism. This is a picture of me working away in my garden. It was done by my friend, Pierre-Auguste Renoir, another Impressionist artist. Many of my Impressionist paintings are pictures of water, boats, oceans, Ponds and lakes were some of my favorite subjects. I loved the way colors reflected in the water, on the special way that water makes the clouds and sky look. I even fixed up a boat as a floating studio. I kept paints, brushes, canvas, and drawing supplies on it. I sailed up and down rivers and streams, stopping to paint wherever I liked. It was fun. Ah! Uh, most of the time. I was born in Paris, France in 1840. When I was little, my family moved from Paris, the capital of France, to the town of Le Havre, which was right on the sea. At Le Havre, ships from all over stopped to pick up supplies for their long journeys. My father owned a grocery store that sold supplies to sailors and shipping companies. <laughs> Believe me, I saw lots of very interesting people while I was growing up. We want 50 sacks of flour. Uh, yeah, and 4,000 feet of rope. A bunch of swords. Ha <laughs> ha! Eighteen gallons of rum. And ten dozen lollipops. I always had a good sense of humor while I was growing up, but I didn't do very well in school. I never listened to anybody and spent most of my time drawing. I even drew funny pictures of my teachers. <clears throat> Monsieur Monet, do you have anything to say about this ridiculous drawing you've made of me? Um, yeah, I probably should have made the nose bigger. <laughs> I became very good at drawing funny pictures. When I was a teenager, some people who also had a good sense of humor paid me to draw pictures of them. The owner of a frame shop in town let me hang my drawings there. I was able to sell a good number of my works there, too. One day, Eugène Baudin, a local artist, who also displayed his work at the frame shop, saw my drawings. He liked them and convinced me to try painting. Wow! Who did these? These are great! This guy should paint! Eugène Baudin had some new and interesting ideas about painting that I liked. Baudin thought artists should paint outside. not inside stuffy studios like most artists did during that time. It is best to paint out of doors. This way you can feel what you paint. Am I right, Monet? 
Yes, Buddha, you are very right. I loved the idea of painting outdoors. From that time on, I decided I would become a painter, no matter what. Of course, my father was worried about me. He knew artists didn't make very much money, but I just wasn't hearing a thing he said. Look, son, it's not easy for me to say this, but painting outdoor scenes and drawing funny pictures of people is no way to make a living. It's not very respectable either, and it's a waste of time. How's this, Dad? It's you! Ah, I give up. Finally, my father agreed to let me study art as soon as I could. I headed for Paris. Paris was the center of the art world. It's where all the great artists and teachers were. I began studying in different studios and made friends with art students, including Pierre-Auguste Renoir, Alfred Sisley, and Frederic Bazel. We all wanted our paintings to get noticed so people would buy them. That meant they had to be shown at the Great Salon in Paris. The Salon was the big art show that happened every two years. People came there from all over the world to see what the best artists were doing and to buy their work. It wasn't easy to get a painting into the Salon, though. Uh -uh -uh -uh. Only a few judges picked the paintings they liked. Hmm, I like this one. <laughs> nice frame. No, 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 no. <laughs> During this time, the Salon judges were looking for paintings that told a story about some important battle or historical event, like this painting of Columbus and his sons by the French artist Eugène Delacroix. They were used to paintings where everything looked clear and sharp, and figures were carefully drawn. They liked dark, moody colors, too. <coughs> By the summer of 1862, my friends and I were working in the studio of the famous art instructor Charles Glier. Claire was a talented, old-fashioned, salon-style teacher. It was great to learn from him. Okay, everybody listen up. Right. But after a while, a lot of us became anxious to try out uh, some of our own, newer ideas. You there, keep the left up! <laughs> I thought it might be fun to get out of Claire's stuffy studio and show my friends how neat it was to paint outdoors. We started spending more time away from the studio and headed for the forests and open country outside of Paris. Hey, this is fun. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love the idea of painting out of doors. In order to catch the flickering effect of sunlight, I learned to work faster. I was excited by how natural things looked in my outdoor paintings. I knew the outdoor paintings I did would never get into the Salon show. Mm -mm -mm -mm. None of them were about a historical event or battle scene. They were mostly about people having fun, enjoying themselves or just uh, pretty outdoor scenes. Nothing appeared to be carefully drawn either. Like this painting called La Grenouillère, which was one of the first Impressionist paintings ever done. I still did paintings I thought would get into the Salon show, though. Sometimes my paintings were accepted, and uh, sometimes they were not. This was one that didn't make it. I used my favorite model for all four women in this painting. Her name was Camille. Camille and I fell in love and got married a few years after this painting was finished. We had two sons. I used Camille and our kids as models in a lot of my paintings, showing them in sunny fields or gardens. 
Oh, oh, by the way, one thing that made it easier for us artists to paint outside was the invention of this. Oil paint in tubes. Before these tubes were invented, <laughs> artists had to mix their own paint in jars with colored powder and oil. Oh, it was a messy job. There were some problems with painting outside, though. Sometimes sand, twigs, and other things stuck to the wet paint. It must have been pretty windy today, huh, Dad? Uh, you could say that. <laughs> I was beginning to have some luck selling my outdoor paintings. But it seemed harder and harder to get my artwork into the salon. My friends were having the same problem, too. So, we decided to do the only thing that made sense. Put on our own art show. We would show the great salon. With their finicky judges, there was a new, beautiful, exciting art being done. And no one was going to stop it. Excuse us, a message from Mr. Monet, Renoir, Cezanne, Pizarro, and the rest of us. Unfortunately, our show didn't work out very well. Actually, that's putting it uh, mildly. I hate these paintings. I'd like to throw them out of the window. Me too. I can't even tell what this is. This is just a bunch of trees. This painting doesn't even look finished. Finished? It's not even started. Of course not. It's Where is this? Where is this? Where is this? Who put that? Just a man of all of us. It's very obvious. He's not finished. Money. How can we stop this from happening at our next show? Easy. Don't have a next show. Well, I guess we were the only ones at that time who were interested in how pretty something looked when the sunlight was on it. Even ordinary things like a, a wheat stack. Or an ocean. or a rocky cliff. Or a boat on the water. This is a painting I entered in our show. It's called Impression Sunrise. It's where the name Impressionist came from. A newspaper man who saw the painting called the whole group of us Impressionists. He was making fun of us, but you know what? The name made sense. We all liked it. This is one painting I displayed at the show that people particularly had a problem with. It's called Le Boulevard de Capuchine. They couldn't stand how sketchy everything looked, especially the people. But I felt the whole painting gave an impression of a delightful moment on a busy Paris street. We tried a few more Impressionist shows, but none of them were very successful either. Even though people weren't crazy about my Impressionist pictures, I kept on painting them. I thought it was important to show scenes of everyday life and try to make colors, shadows, and the light in my paintings seem as real as possible. In my painting of Gas and Lazar, I was even able to show steam and dampness coming from a train engine. If you take a very close look at some of my paintings, you can hardly tell what I painted. It just looks like a bunch of colorful brush strokes. But when you step back a little, ooh, look at this, it all starts to make sense. What happens is, your eye ends up mixing and blending the colors. The quick, exciting brush strokes and colors in my paintings can give you a feeling of being right there at the moment I made the painting. A 
I wanted to get as close as I could to the things I was painting, no matter what the conditions were. Sometimes I had to tie my easel down so that the waves wouldn't wash my painting away. There, now that I have tied my painting to a rock, <laughs> nothing can go wrong. Whoa! I must admit I had a terrible temper at times. If the weather wasn't exactly the way I hoped, I was known to have a fit. Sometimes I threw and broke things, and even destroyed paintings I was working on. Hey, Mom, I think it's gonna rain today. Oh, how do you know? Because Dad just tore the barn down. Oh, well, you can't blame me. It's not easy to capture a moment of time when the sunlight is just right. For a while, I painted many pictures of the same subject to see how sunlight changes the look of something. I painted these wheat stacks and haystacks at different times of the day and in different seasons. In 1891, I showed 15 of my haystack paintings, all lined up together. This show was a big success. <laughs> a haystack here. Another haystack over here. <laughs> oh, make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> I'm so glad. As time went on, people started to appreciate my work. Many years after the first Impressionist show, I had sold enough paintings to settle down and buy a house in the beautiful French town of Giverny. I built a wonderful water garden there. I spent years painting scenes of my garden. These paintings of water lilies from my garden are some of the most beautiful and famous ones I did. Some of them are over 40 feet wide. <laughs> That's me when I was an old man in front of one of my famous paintings. Uh, I lived to be 86 years old, by the way. My brush strokes became drier and looser near the end of my life. Close up, these paintings really look abstract. Hmm. I wonder if I influenced any of those modern artists who came after me. I was able to show how things looked at the moment I saw them, almost like a camera does. I loved nature and painted with colors so a scene would look as much like nature as possible. I was even able to paint mist and fog and make it seem real. Today, my paintings are in museums all over the world. I hope you get a chance to see some of them in person. When you get real close, you can see how simple my brush strokes are and how many colors I used. Maybe you can try doing a painting in my style. It will help you understand Impressionism a little better. And who knows? You might even be a future world's great artist someday. Well, goodbye for now. It was nice getting to know you.